John said before, uh, when we sat down on this couch, it felt like we're on a one-on-one. -on -one. We got the whole setup here. Sit we got grapes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> If only the smoothies were wine. Yeah. It's like PTSD oh gosh. PTSD right now. PTSD of the Bachelor. Yeah. I feel like I'm getting too casual over here. <laughs> yeah. What's up, guys? It's Katie Austin here, and my guest for today is Sean Booth. I am so excited that you decided to join Austin AF today in Nashville. Yeah, thanks How for having me. Welcome back to Nashville. Yeah. You're always here, I feel like. I was. I used to be always here. Yeah. Um, I do owe Sean a gym session at Booth Camp. I promised you. Yeah, we're not going to talk about this. Yeah, we're not going to talk about this, but we'll talk about it. So two years ago, I was here for the CMAs, and I saw you at a party, and I was like, I'm going to come work out with you at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. I think we're it was like 2 in the morning when you said that. So I was yeah. like, all right, you got like four and a half hours to get and ready. And I'm holding a tequila drink. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, of course I can do that. That's fine. And uh, I bailed on you. Didn't show up. I literally stood Never to be seen guys. again. So, and I was like, I texted you. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm so sorry. There's no way in hell. I was just my drunk me talking. Yeah, and we're trying to get her back in, but she's already given excuses for this week. So... We'll so, get her there one day. I, I swear I'm a fitness trainer, guys. I swear. We did get you some post-workout protein smoothies. I see this. It's the whole setup right here. Yeah. So we know that you are obviously a fitness trainer and super into your health. So we got you strawberry, banana, almond butter, almond milk. I hope you like that. Do, did do, you make this? No, I did, did not. Okay. You had one of I would have made yeah. it if we were in, in Los Angeles, but you know we're here in Nashville. Uh, we did get it from Cheers. delivery service. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Am I supposed to rate this? Ooh, yeah, rate it, rate it, rate it. There's peanut butter in there, right? Yeah, a little bit. I, I think so. Almond. Is butter. there peanut? Yeah. Almond butter. Yeah. I'm like looking at everybody else. I'm like, who made this? <laughs> uh, it's good. This is like a classic protein shake that I make. Okay, so what is your classic go-to protein uh, shake? Right now, actually, I take that back. It's anything I have in the gym. So I get a ton of protein just shit for me to me from all other uh, companies. And it's like whatever's sitting there after my workout, I'll shake it up. When I go home, I'm like actually wanting to make a decent shake. I'll do chocolate, Ooh. peanut butter, almond milk, strawberries, blueberries, uh, throw in some kale. Yum. That's about it. That sounds good. Yeah. So tell me about your workouts and yeah. booth camp and everything because you started your own gym, which is crazy. Do you have yeah. two locations now? One location right now. Okay. Uh, we are growing. It's been awesome. Uh, very rewarding. Uh, right here downtown. Uh, group fitness. We do seven classes a day. Oh my goodness! Um, from five thirty a.m. till six thirty p.m. We have an awesome staff, and it's all, you know, split up during the week for different body parts. Uh, we like to do athletic workouts, but anybody can come and work out, whether you've never even touched the weight or if you've been in the NFL. So it's been a, a, an awesome time. And if they go to booth camp, are yeah. you the trainer and coach that they're going to get? I, sometimes? Uh, sometimes we have six coaches, so I have a handful of classes each week. But okay. I'm, I'm always there. I live there. Do you ever get like crazy fans coming? Yeah, we get some fans in there. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. is it weird? You're like, oh, yeah, I'm here. And then they come up to you and they're like, can we get some photos and stuff? Yeah, well, it's funny because a lot of them don't think it's going to be like a legit workout. We get a ton of bachelorette <laughs> parties, like a ton of bachelorette parties. Uh, we do private bachelorette parties, but they'll show up in like matching outfits, sachet. Is that the right word? Yeah, sachet. yeah. Sachet. Um, some awesome. people show up with roses and I'm like, you can't bring those in there. Keep oh those outside. God. We'll trade that for a dumbbell. And then they, uh, they quickly, uh, get a rude awakening once we start the workout. And I feel like starting a business, especially a gym is so much harder than people think, especially with this last two years. Oh, it's how tough. has it been and how, you know, how has the last year and a half or two years really changed your business model? Yeah. I, th I mean, same thing. I didn't know how much time I'd have to spend there. I knew it would be like a huge commitment, but you really, really have to put everything you have into it. And I think a lot of people just want to open a business just to say that they have a business or people do it as hobbies. or, um, But it's something, if you're passionate about it, that's the only way it's going to work. And I've felt like, um, and the biggest thing is having the best people around you. Like everybody's like, what's the number one tip that you have for growing a business, for opening a gym? I'm like, it's all about the people you have. Your yeah. coaches, your staff, your support system. Um, that's how you make it keep running. And uh, we've been lucky enough to have the best people in the business working with us. Speaking of best people, do you have any advice on how to find those good people? Because it's really hard. I feel like yeah. in Nashville, it might be a lot easier. But LA, there's so many people and there's so many not so good people as well. Yeah, I mean, I feel like LA is super tough for that. Really tough. I bet it's really tough. Um, I mean, I've been lucky. Um, I have 
two of my right hand people, Carmen Morgan and Alex Piccarelli, who are like huge in the fitness industry. I feel so lucky to have them on my team. We all have like our different personalities, our different specialties. And then from there, we grow out with other trainers in town, just doing interviews and, and kind of seeing what works. I've always wanted to keep a tight knit staff so mm -hmm. people know what they're getting when they come in. I feel like a lot of gyms just have like a million coaches and they might get this coach one day or this coach another day. Um, but with us, they know what they're getting, but each coach has their own flair. So it's a little different. Right. And like that creates a sense of community as well. Yeah. And that's so, the number one, uh, cause for our success is, is our community. Right. It's like the best community around. Everybody supports one another. And I think that's the most rewarding part is seeing the, the friendships form, the relationships form and, um, going to a place every single day where you get to see people better than themselves and, and most importantly, having a good time. I feel like that's the most important thing about fitness yeah. and making sure you stick to it too, because as someone who's also in the fitness industry, I feel very alone sometimes. Mm -hmm. I work out by myself. My app is fully by myself. And mm -hmm. so it's really hard sometimes to feel like you're connecting to other people. Right. And when you do connect to other people in the fitness industry, you feel so much more motivated and like you can be kept accountable. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I get that. And, and I, I personally enjoy doing group fitness over personal training. Uh, I just like the atmosphere. Same. I love the energy. Same. Um, I, I don't mind one-on-one, -on -one, but if I had to choose, group fitness all day long. Completely agree. And now you guys have gone virtual as well. Yes, so yeah. people can find your workouts online. Yeah, boot camp on demand. So now they can do the same workouts that we do at the Black Turf here in Nashville every day. Oh, yeah. We record every day. We do the same workouts. And I mean, we feel like it's one of the best fitness apps around. And Hell again, yeah. it, it's it's taking you from the very beginning of warming up, getting your body primed, all the way through a solid workout, uh, the best programming you can find. Amazing. And uh, most importantly, having a good time. Well, congrats. Yeah, congrats thank on building you. that. Thank and, you. Uh, I just like to switch gears. And uh, yeah. uh, Sean said before, uh, when we sat down on this couch, it felt like we're on a one-on-one. -on -one. We got the whole setup here. Yeah. We got a grapes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if only the smoothies were wine. Yeah. It's like PTSD oh, gosh. right PTSD now. PTSD of The Bachelor. Yeah. Okay, so you're on The Bachelorette. Yes. Okay, what years? Okay, I have to be honest with you. Yeah. I told you this before. I never have watched it. Yeah, that's good. Ever. That's good thing. Literally, I don't yeah. watch the show. Yeah. So just, just you know, kind of preface if you're if you're like me and you never watched what years and what was it really? Yeah, it was a long was. time ago, back in the day, uh, season eleven, The Bachelorette. Um, we had two Bachelorettes. It was like the first time ever where, where the guys had to choose the girl on night one, which I don't think would fly in two thousand twenty-one. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was very what? yeah. They had two girls. Um, they surprised us. Pulled up to the house in a limo and we had two bachelorettes sitting there and they're like, all right, go ahead, do what you got to do. That's really evil. Yeah. So wait, the other girl that didn't get chosen, she just went Rit. home that night. I mean, yeah, she was a sweetheart and it's, it was terrible. And you had to vote on which one you wanted? So the guys had to vote which girl they wanted to stay. Evil. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> oh, mean, that looking went back on it, it's so bad. So bad. Yeah. I so you're sitting in the limo and they're like, all right. Who are you going to go up to first? And it's like this whole mind game is right out of the gate. You're like, oh boy, this is this oh is intense. Oh my gosh. And yeah. it, it kind of like puts you on the spot and you feel a little guilty on who you're choosing because yeah. they both are like putting their heart in a show on national television. Yeah. And then if you choose the wrong one and then the other girl knows that you picked that other girl, she's like, see you later. Like it's a whole thing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. So what made you originally want to go on the show? Yeah, so I was actually out in Nashville with a couple of buddies, and we were out downtown. Uh, it was like a Tuesday night, and we were just drinking, and it was like midnight, and we're like, ooh, that honky-tonk right there has a ton of girls in it. Let's go there. So we were there, and then come to find out, they were doing casting for The Bachelor. So all these girls no. and their friends are all done up. They're trying to get on The Bachelor, and a producer came up, and she asked if I wanted to sit down and interview for The Bachelorette. No way. Yeah. And I said, I said no. I was like, nah, I don't think that's for me. Like, I've already had like eight Coors Lights at this point. It's like 1230 in the morning. Um, and then months went down the road and she had gotten my information from another buddy. And then she called and said that she was in town. And she's like, can you meet me at this hotel? And I was like, this sounds really sketchy, but yeah. I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, Whoa. Yeah. and then I got to the hotel room. There's two ladies with a camera. I'm like, all right, what are we doing here? Yeah, I feel like it's so different from nowadays, yeah. too, because people, you know, apply online and not to really 
down anything and you, uh, you don't have to agree with me, but people literally go on the show nowadays oh, to become Instagram famous. It's a whole different ball it's game. It's a whole different world now. And it's so crazy because when you were on it, I feel like people were genuinely looking for love. Yeah. Like, I feel like it was very, very different. It, the whole Instagram thing didn't exist as much. Like, no. people didn't know you could make money afterwards being an influencer and like doing all that stuff. Yeah. I feel like we were like the last of the Mohegans. Like, our group agree. was awesome dudes. Um, we had great bachelorette and it was like you said you're going on there and it's like and everybody's reason it was the same it's like we're gonna go travel the world meet some good buddies potentially like have a connection with this girl and we'll see where it goes but never in like a million years did i expect what happened afterwards and i remember like sitting there like towards the end like about to propose and the producers are being like, you better get ready, your life's about to change. I'm like, no, I won't be that crazy. Oh. And then that's when gosh. Instagram was blowing up. Like, and it was it was a big deal. So you really fell in love on a reality show. Yeah, I think love's a loose term. Like looking back at it, there was like a serious connection. And it was uh, I don't know if it was true, true love. I guess it wasn't because we'd still be together if it was. Like, of course you're thinking it's love. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's you're put in a situation where you're completely secluded from the world. You can't talk to your friends. You can't talk to your family. You can't watch TV. You don't have the internet. I mean, you're there for 12 weeks. You're trying to like just figure out your emotions and your feelings. And you have this person that you're kind of going through the process with. Um, so I, yeah, I question it. Like, was it true love? I mean, probably not. Cause if it was, like I said, we'd right. probably still be together. Did I have a love for her? Yeah, of course. And we had this, we had this connection like right out of the gate. That's, that's a, it wasn't like a forced thing. Uh, we connected, um, and we had an, an awesome time. Right. But like afterwards, like, you know, it, it's just like the situation makes it, uh, pretty easy Totally. To There's fall in love. No distractions. No distractions, which is like some people are like, oh, that's a good thing, right? Because out in the real world, you have your phone, you have, you know, all these different options. And here you're able to focus on a relationship, which was cool. Right. Like, I love that. I love not having my phone. Like, that was the best. Like, not having to worry about anything. Do that. <laughs> but then, like, you sit down for these interviews and it's like almost therapy daily. Like, just digging into your emotions and your past. Wow. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it was true, true love. But you did stay together for About years. Three years Three after. years afterwards. Yeah. So was it just more so like the heightened, you know, publicity around it? And like, you know what I mean? When you yeah. both go through something together and America like is yeah. like rooting for you, it's hard to almost like break America's heart. Yeah. I mean, there was definitely a lot of pressure with that relationship. And um, it was fun. Like we had, we had a fun time. Like we were very good at having fun and showing the world that we had fun um being in love and doing the whole love thing we weren't that good at behind closed doors and i think there was some sense of like a trauma bond right it's like like i'll always be connected to her in that way we'll always have that bond like we went through something that i mean a handful of people in the world have gone through and it's such a crazy cool experience where you experience the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, and having to do all that on a public display is just like, holy cow, like it was intense. Um, but it makes you grow as a person. And so in that sense, that's like, yeah, we'll always be connected that way. And you related on a level and you grew together in that yeah. way. And yeah. it's so I feel like it's just, like you said, you know, it's it's hard for other people to understand that. Yeah, And exactly. it's also really exciting afterwards. Yeah, super exciting um, because you get to, Once you propose and you're engaged, then you have to be quiet about it for about 14 weeks. That's crazy. So you're getting like, I mean, I couldn't even go back to work, like, because I was flying out to LA every other weekend. We're doing these secret hideouts, which is just like, I mean, that's fun. Yeah, fun. (laughs) It's really fun. And we were kind of crazy too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we were like, we kind of like definitely broke a lot of rules and, um, I mean, because you would go in this house in LA, you'd have to fly under um, an alias. Like, how is that I, legal? Yeah, I don't know. There was a lot of stuff that I don't know how they did, but it would be like somebody would come pick me up at my, at my house and be like, Eric? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm Eric. Because she was Ariel, like the Stop. Little Mermaid. Yeah. And so then we'd travel under those names, and then she would go to this house in one car. 
I would get taken to that house a few hours later and the house would be like in the middle of LA somewhere where it's completely secluded, trees, fence, like you're not allowed to leave the property. And they just like stock, like every counter has just booze and food. And they're like, all right, don't leave. Like half the time they had a producer that would have to stay in the house. Shut up. Yeah, and you, like, you can't leave. And it's just like, all right, so let's just get drunk eat and do what other, oh, you know, other, what things. other, other things that <laughs> That's newly so in love fun and exciting. Do. I do yeah. think though it, it's still like, even after the show, it's still not real life. Yeah. It's it, not real it's, life for a it's while. It's not real. And so your connection, it's almost like this, like, I, so I have a boyfriend and like during COVID, like yeah. it's so different because yeah. you know, yeah. it's not real life. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit, obviously way heightened. Yeah. But at the same time, like did at least the engagement feel real? Did it feel like, holy shit, this is my fiance? No. Okay. It didn't feel like, uh, at that point, it was like, I am so, so worn down mentally, emotionally, physically. Like, I knew we were going to end up together for like a long time in that show. Like, I never, never really had a doubt, like ever. Like, I was always like, yep, it's, she's going to pick me. Um, and then that last night was just like, Let's just get this over with and get out of here. Gotcha. Like it was, you know, I was asking them, like, what if I don't propose? Right. Like, I mean, this is kind of a big deal. And they're basically were like, if you don't propose, then everybody's going to hate you. Right. Like, dude, you're going to be <laughs> you're hated. Like you, yeah. you got to remember that. There's going to be 10 million so people like from watching. So, that first that. night, you guys basically had that deep connection that yeah. you knew that she was going to pick you. Do you think that's usually how it works? Yes. And I think that was a problem because she had said that, like, that's the guy. And then from that point forward, everybody saw our connection and like they had to make a TV show. Right. So they're like, all right, this girl's already like basically has her mind set on who she wants to pick. She's said it. And we used to have 12 weeks to film a show. So let's do everything in our power to split these two up, not make it look like this. And like, I mean, we got put through the ringer. Right. And like, the oh, ringer man. of like any little thing that you can think to mess with me and mess with her, they did. So I think that like definitely grew like our our uh, relationship. For sure. Because they were trying to pull us apart the entire time because they needed a show. Like it's a business. Right. And you have to have so much confidence doing mm -hmm. that as well, going into that kind of show too. And like yeah. knowing at the end, like even if they're pulling you apart, like you still have to be so confident in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just think like little things like anytime I was on a date, like towards like the end, say there's like, I don't know, a handful of us left. And you go out to these locations. Like I remember being in Ireland oh and there's like a, a horse and a buggy like going around. And I was like, so the producer's like, hey, uh, when I get my time, I want to take Caitlin on like the horse and buggy. They're like, no, you can't do that. We're not allowed to do that. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, so then we know you're too close to winning. Please yeah. <laughs> and then every time I sat down with her, there'd be somebody pulling me away like within five minutes, be like, hey, can I steal her for a second? And like every <laughs> other guy, I get like an hour, hour and a half. And I was like sitting there for like two hours and I'm like, and then a guy comes back and it's like, oh, how was it? And he's like, great. Got to take her on this horse and buggy ride. What the heck? Like stuff like that, you know? Just, <laughs> so I think that stuff kind of uh, strengthened our bond. For sure. Yeah. I feel like we've all gone through breakups in our life, but I think going through a public breakup is very, yeah. very different. Yeah. Um, was there any just like things that help you get through like a public breakup and I know there's probably so many people coming at you online yeah. and asking what happened and stuff like how did you really cope with doing a public breakup I think the gym helped me a lot um keeping like a close knit group of people around you always um yeah I mean it's tough dealing with that stuff in the public but you have to, to remember like what's important in life and if people have these opinions and they want to talk negatively to you, it's like they have no idea who you are as a person. They have no idea what was going on in your relationship. Um, I mean, it's just crazy to see how many people were like hurt and upset by it. Like, right. like we had did something to them. That's something that I learned like a while back too. Like you can't control that. Um, but yeah, I just went on with my life. And I think that that's uh, a reason why the gym is so successful. And I was able to build this solid career for myself because I put so much focus and energy in that for and sure. trying to like use my energy to help other people Absolutely. And, and trying not to, to worry about the, that stuff. Yeah. 
I feel like, I don't know, I just feel like a public breakup must be, must be really hard, especially, you know, when you're together for so long, I like three years is yeah. like, you know, relatively. Yeah, not long. Relatively yeah. long. And it's like, after that, also, you're posting on social media and saying you're happy together. And I think that's so important to remember, like, we don't know about your relationship. Yeah. You know, like social media is a facade to everything. Like yeah. when I broke up with my boyfriend, we were together for five years, my yeah. last one. And like I'd posted a week before being like, I love you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy. Like yeah. all this stuff. And it was like our relationship was literally we were about to break up. Oh, I know. So people just don't know at all. And social media is not real around like love and stuff. Yeah. And I think that's like very important to remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like I have a completely different outlook on that now. Like for just sure. going through that because like we would have to post stuff and just to like make it seem like everything was still good and we're still happy. And like now I don't trust anything. And I feel like, <laughs> like you also had to do it for business too. Because yeah. like, you know, you were doing brand deals together yeah. and, and and you you want to keep like not only America happy, but like your sponsors happy too, yeah. which is so odd. It's a, such a different part of a relationship. It is. It's a whole... Uh, it's a whole different ball game with that. Yeah, you do have brand deals. Um, yeah, and, and that's why I look at relationships now from The Bachelor. Um, and I'm like, are they actually happy? It's hard to tell. Because I'm like, if I do the math, I don't, and I don't watch it. I, don't, I haven't watched it since my season. Um, but I feel like there are a lot more couples together now, right? Would you say? like? I don't, I don't know. know. I feel like, you know, it's very short-lived. Aren't there short a ton lived. of engagement stuff? So I feel yeah, like... Yeah, but it's very short-lived. Okay. I feel like Ashley I is a good example of, like, like a good, healthy yeah. relationship. Yeah. I feel like they, yeah. they're they having them. a baby. Love I mean, Jared. come on, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was on my season. He's a oh, good buddy nice. of mine. Yeah, he's nice. awesome. He's awesome. But yeah, I, I don't know what to, to believe. Yeah. You know? And I feel like we were late on a level, too, because after my five-year-long relationship, we dated yeah. for, like, five and a half years, yeah. and about two... Two months after we broke up, after literally so long, yeah. he had a new girlfriend. Yeah. And like she would post it, she would post all like the new girlfriend would post all the stuff online about them. Yeah. It's like, oh shit, okay, we just broke up. Did you yeah. feel any sadness or anything when you saw that your ex had a new Yeah, girlfriend? I mean, but I knew it for a while. So it was kind of, but I didn't I everybody deals with breakups in a different way. Right. That was her way of dealing with a breakup. Um, getting right into it and wanting to share it with the world. Um, I felt like it was disrespectful, but that's not my place to say. Like, we weren't together. She was able to do whatever she wanted to do. Right. Um, so it didn't really matter how I felt. Uh, the biggest takeaway I took from that was, okay, this is like a good move that we ended. Totally. Like, let's rip off the Band-Aid completely. Like, let's get it over with. Because I feel like, Going through breakups, like it's super hard at first when you break up with a person, right? And it's like your best friend at that time in your life. And then um, that's a, a battle in itself to get over that. And then nobody wants to see their ex with somebody new, right? No. That's always another battle you have to deal with. So the fact that I was able to get that all done in like a month and a half, two months, like I'm like, just put all the pain, like let's yeah. do it, like rip it off and get it over with and let's move on. And you didn't really retaliate. like. You were definitely a bigger person than I was. I saw my ex with a new person and literally within a month, I didn't even like this guy yeah. and I posted with him. Yeah. And I was like, and I'm like, yeah. Katie, and I look back now and I like laugh at myself and I'm like, why would I do that? Because I needed that time alone to yeah. find myself and like figure out like what my next move is. It's like sometimes when you numb the pain with another person, it doesn't mm. always work and every single person goes through a breakup so differently. But for me, I needed to be alone and I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. And I like, when I went into a relationship right away, I bottled up every emotion that I had and like, yeah. and it just like kind of cr came crashing down a year after my other yeah. breakup. So yeah. I feel like it's, I feel like, you know, if you are out there also going through a breakup, like taking that time alone is so important. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it uh, helps you find yourself and figure out what you want. For sure. So, For yeah, sure. breakups are fun. Breakups are fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you did yeah. have, I'm not going to ask you if you're seeing anyone right now, but if you did have a girlfriend, would you go public with it or like post about it? Because you probably have so many like traumatic moments about social media. Yeah. So that's something where I'm like, um, little scarred from that yeah where it's like everybody wanted to know my personal life and my relationship and i don't think that that was uh helpful in our relationship so really? i would now like keep everything under wraps and then you know 
when I felt like the time was right, if it was something that was, uh, I thought was going to be something uh, very serious, then yeah, of course. Right. But I've dated and, and done all that stuff for sure. But I've never wanted to be like, hey, guess who I'm with? Right. Look who I'm with. Because all of a sudden, that puts pressure on that. And it's also really not fair for that person, I think. Either. I completely they get agree. get kind of thrown into some madness. So I kind of went the other way where I'm like, I even got more walls up now. And like, I don't want to share much of my personal, personal life. But it's better for your mental health that way, too, yeah. because social media can be such a beast online when you start to share your personal stuff and yeah. people have always something to say. Yes. How do you really go about like a mental health for The Bachelor, B mental health from having so many online followers and like, you know, being in a public eye? Is there any, yeah. you know, effects? Yeah, I think it's it? been uh, that's been uh a pro is like trying to strengthen my mental game. And that's something that I battled with, continue to battle with. I think everybody does. And I think going on that show like made me like realize what I need to work on. And it, like I said, it broke me down. It lit me up like yeah. every emotion possible. Um, so I've grown so much in the past five or whatever years just from that and like really starting to focus on my mental health, which I never did before. Like it was all like physical health, like working out, working out, working out. Um, but now, I mean, I'm 35 years old. So I'm like, I need to figure out what's going on in my brain. Like, right. Why am I doing this? Or why do I do that? Or um, what is that going to do to benefit me? Absolutely. So it's always a battle. And it's so important that you say this too, because I feel like there's a stigma around men's mental health yes. as well. Yeah. And it's always about being fit and it's always yeah. about like looking good and having muscle. And, you know, I think fitness, both of us as fitness trainers, I think working out is a huge part of our mental health. Like mm -hmm. I worked out this morning, not because I want to burn calories or mm -hmm. anything like that. I work out on like work trips because it like clears my mind and yes. helps like my anxiety and my stress levels. What else do you do besides like working out, would you say, for your mental health? Yeah, um, I spend a lot of time with my dog. I think that what that's- What is Walter? Walter. Walter. Yeah, yeah. I literally almost thought you were going to bring him. <laughs> I almost did. I should have. I, I thought it. about it. Yeah, I was going to. Um, yeah, that's something that I, you know, I've always had a dog at least for the past 12 years. And it's something where I can come home. Uh, I put my phone away, like play with my dog, take him on walks, do training with him to try and clear my mind. Um, that's always helped. So, but I'm kind of similar to you, like working out. I like to do it because it makes me feel good. Right. Like if I don't work out for a couple of days, I'm like, you know. So I, tense. Yeah. I feel like yeah. also helping others is such a great way to. Yeah, it feels great. It feels so good feels when you great. know that our jobs are so gratifying. Yeah. Yeah. But other people are like, I have felt my best self because of you. Yes. Like, it's such a rewarding oh, thing yeah. to hear. There's nothing better. Like, I feel so lucky to do what I do every day. I get to wake up. I go to a gym with my friends. Like, I always uh, kind of compare it to, like, a summer job I used to have. Like, yeah. when I was in high school with my buddies, every summer going to play, like, sports with the kids. But now it's, like, going to work, hanging out with my friends all day. So fun. And then we're having a good time and most importantly trying to better ourselves i love and that so when you see the progress with somebody and they're like you've helped me change my life it's like that's it's awesome feel good about what you do one of my favorite questions that i ask people and someone like you is really important to ask too because you're so into fitness and health what is your morning routine like and i feel like our morning routines obviously set the mood for the yeah. entire day as well yeah and there can be some mental health aspects to that as well do you have like any type of routine that you do every morning or maybe like some mornings? Yeah, most mornings. I think phones are a killer to mental health. Social media is like the worst thing for mental health. And it's like scientifically proven, right? And it's like sad now seeing kids having to grow up with that. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I do when I wake up is I make sure I don't look at my phone for about a good like half hour to 45 minutes. So usually I'm up during the weeks around 4.15 in the morning. And I'll have. I'm my, sorry. What? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. 4:15. That took me a second to process. 4:15 <laughs> in the morning. Yeah. Are usually, you serious? Yeah, because usually I'm at the gym by five. Yeah. What time do you go to bed? Um, I go to bed. Again, there's not like I try to get to bed around like nine. Okay. Like, Ten. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Do you yeah. drink coffee? Uh, I I go through spurts. Okay. I'm on a coffee kick this past month. Wow. Yeah. 
Four fifteen. Yeah. Four fifteen. Four eighteen. How do you get out of bed at four fifteen? Actually, I don't like odd numbers, so I have to set my alarm to like four eighteen, four twenty, four twenty two. Well, I swear I to God, never, I can same. never do like four same. or four thirty. I can't. Yeah. I always have to do like four oh four. I would never do that, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Four oh four is way too early. Yeah. How? Okay, if you had to give any advice out there for someone trying to become a morning person, yeah. What would you say? Because so many people find it so hard. You got. I mean, it sounds so cliche and so stupid. It's like do something that you love and want to wake up to do. Like that's the thing that makes it easy. If I was waking up at four o'clock every morning to go like to an old job I had, which was like insurance, I wouldn't be able to do it. I would yeah. hate it. I would dread it. But also I have a lot of responsibility like on my shoulders. Right. To, it's, it's my business. I have people, um, their livelihoods depend on me. I have employees. So for that reason, it's super easy to get up and not like, I love that. But yeah, so I, I try not to look at my phone also because and like, one of my coworkers, Carmen Morgan, she's like the most scientific, like smartest person I know, like um, very much into science and the body. And she'll tell me like tips and tricks and be like, do you know if like, as soon as you get up, you start scrolling, that's immediately taken away your recovery from your sleep from the night before. So it's terrible. You want to wait. So I'm like, I always try and listen to what she has to say. So that's something I do. Keep my phone away from my bed. Uh, I'll set my alarms on my watch, get my breakfast take Walter out, oh. whatever. But a big thing is making sure I don't go on my phone. I have recently just started doing that. Yeah. Carmen, you said? Car Car Carmen Morgan. Carmen, yeah. she is right. Yeah. Because right when you look at your phone in the morning, yeah. it takes away from your time to focus on yourself as well. Mm -hmm. And like that time you should kind of be, you know, kind of manifesting how you're supposed to have the best day. Yeah. And when you do that, you're like, automatically thinking about other people mm -hmm. and that time should be for yourself as well as like at night. Yes. And I can't do an hour yet at night or in morning yeah. without looking at my phone. Yeah. I can only do like 15 minutes. Yeah. No, hey, you got to start really somewhere, but that's like <laughs> another tip for people who want to try that. You got to start like yeah. the, the power of habit is a real thing. Like you have to keep doing it for like 20, 25 days to get in that habit. But like I've started to I got a to-do list. Like that's something I do when I sit down in the morning at my table. I'll write down the stuff I need to get done for that day. Like I'm, per I'm a person that needs to like check off the just the words that makes me like feel good. Like it has to be pen and paper too. Yeah, I pen cannot and paper. do my phone. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then um, I even started journaling recently, which is that. like it's. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it's I different, but it's I started like people, journaling and I'm yeah. like, I cannot have anyone ever find this journal. Yeah. Oh, dear gosh. <laughs> it's like one that I found for like men's health. And I don't even know, I wish I knew what it was, but it's just oh, like, awesome. like kind of guides you through stuff, like yeah. ask you questions. And it's not like, oh, I really have a crush on this person. <laughs> yeah. like, That's fine like if it says that too. Yeah. yeah, you can do what you want. Um, but yeah, but I think it, there definitely is a, a stigma with men's health like um, mental health. Yeah. Guys are afraid to admit it, but I know a ton of guys that struggle with it. Yeah. And, and they just don't want to, and literally like me who have this wall or you don't want to talk about it or you just want to be this tough guy. And yeah. It just all builds up. I think men who are in touch with their emotions are, I'm most attracted to them. Mm. Um, my boyfriend, he's like very in touch with his, his emotions. Anyways, uh, so if you're a guy out there listening, being in touch with your there emotions you is a good thing. This kind of brings me to one of our segments that we have called mm. Mood Boosting Mantra. It's like a quote or a mantra or a motto, a sentence, anything that like kind of like rings true to yeah. how you got to where you are today or something that even just like motivated you today. Yeah. Could be really anything. Like a quote. I'm not really a big quote guy, but I've always been drawn to this quote that's uh, you're never as you're not as good as they say you are, but you're not as bad as they say you are either. I don't know. Like that. <laughs> OK, right? I mean, so I, you're, you're not as like you don't let the highs get you too high. Okay. Don't let the lows get Keep you, you too humble. low. Exactly. So if you're doing something you're rocking on like. Yeah, it's awesome, but don't start getting too cocky, too like confident about something because we all know how life works. It's going to yes. bring you back down. When you're back down and we're in the lowest of lows, don't let the lowest of lows get you too low. I, uh, I, I, need, I really I need a, like that. I need that. to look up that quote. So No, no, no. You're, I, think, I think you're right because I like that. Okay. I feel like that quote... Um, I really like that as an influencer because in a social media world, you can have so many people saying how much they love you. And as influencers, we sometimes, you know, get those comments who are, they're not real 
like you can't see it in real life, someone saying that to you. Right. But at the same time, when you have so many people saying how much they love you online, it can get to our heads. And it's actually a good thing if you do have like social media followers online to like make sure you're staying humble. Right. Um, and like I, I do need someone to check myself sometimes. And <laughs> Here it is. And to realize you're not that important. It's from Lou Holtz. Okay. All right. So he knows what he's talking about. You're never as good as everyone tells you when you win. You're never as bad as they say when you lose. Can you say it one more time? You're never as good as everyone tells you when you win. And you're never as bad as they say when you lose. I really, really like that. I like, I like the quote, the actual the, quote, the quote better. Is a lot better than my quote. <laughs> like that yeah, makes a lot yeah, more sense lot, now. Yeah. Just scratch that first part. <laughs> just like put some subtitles. Yeah. Like what double over my was. voice. Yeah. But that's always been a good one. All right. Now I have another segment for you. It is speed dating question. Yes or no, would you rather this or that type mm -hmm. thing? You'll understand it's very easy. Mm -hmm. um, you can elaborate on these or you can just say the word. Coffee date or dinner date? I think coffee date, it's uh, a little more relaxed. Completely agree. Yeah. And also, I feel like before a dinner, oh, I don't know why I'm taking over this question now, <laughs> but I feel like a dinner date holds a lot of pressure. And it's it like, does. do you go home with them after? Do I actually really like this person? And a coffee date can be like 30 minutes or it can be two hours. Yeah. And you got the whole the eating thing. Like, that's always a big pe a question that everybody always asks. Like, do you eat the food on The Bachelor when you're at like this do dinner you? date? Um they feed you or they try to feed you before it's like but not really because you're sitting there and you're like trying to talk because you don't yeah. have much time yeah uh, but i, I feel like coffee totally is way more casual food. i would yeah. eat it because i can't yeah. not have anything that's not sitting in front of me yeah i eat it um no self-control anyways tequila or wine on a date if you're at the dinner date it's like with sean i'm gonna go tequila tequila yeah. i like that yeah. i like that yeah let's get straight to the point yeah um okay text or facetime I'm a FaceTime guy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank God. I'm a FaceTime guy. I call. Like, girls will be like, why are you calling? Like, this is weird. I love a call on a FaceTime. Yeah. I hate texting. Yeah. I also think if you are just starting to meet someone, texting a lot ruins the relationship and yeah. ruins the excitement right away. Yeah. I feel like just like two calls a day or FaceTime to be like, hey, what's up? How was your day? Yeah. Is like the perfect. I enjoy a good FaceTime. Me too. And by the way, girls. If you have no makeup on and he's FaceTiming you, he won't notice and you still look beautiful. Answer the damn FaceTime. Yeah, I wanna see you without the makeup. Yeah. Like I'm, I'd rather have no makeup. Absolutely. My, my entire first date with my boyfriend, it was a three day date. Yeah. We like went on a dinner date and then yeah. we like stayed together till Monday on a Friday to Monday and I literally wore no makeup the whole time. That's awesome. And it was like, that's how that. you know He's you're still most... with you. Yeah. yeah. It's only been a year. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, but at the same time, like that's how you know you're comfortable with someone yeah, is when you like, you know, if you have a full face of makeup on 24 seven, you want to, you want to get to know the real you. Hike or movie date? Again, I feel like this is like a, a combo day where you go on a hike during the day and you come back home and you're on the couch, you watch a movie. Oh. I'm going to throw that into a little combo. I there. like I'm gonna that. Take both of those, get a little fitness in there. Of course, get the endorphins going, yeah, get, get the some endorphins happiness going. going. Yeah. I love that. Would you call her after the first date if she only talked about her ex the whole time? No. Okay, cool. No. Would you fly a girl out when you met her on a dating app? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm not on, I haven't been on any dating apps, but. But if you would, just met her online, you never met her in person, would you fly her out? I would have to go through the process of FaceTiming. Of course. Yeah. For <laughs> sure. See if she's uh, not a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. And then fly her out. Yeah. Okay. Would you ever date a girl you train? That's kind of a tricky question. <laughs> no, that's, uh, that's a good question. Okay, we'll go on to the next. No, I mean, like, <laughs> that's a good question. It's a good one. It's a good one. That's all he's going to say. Romantic no. comedy or horror movie? Um, I'm a horror movie guy. Oh, gosh. This is where we disagree. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Really? Yeah. Why? It gets like, you, I mean, gets you all jazzed up. Like, oh, I want to feel something. And then something. you cuddle afterwards? Yeah. Like, I watched yeah. one the other night. And it's, uh, if you've never seen it, it's called Strangers. Watch that. Nope. In your house. Mm -mm. I got a house that's, like, kind of in the middle of the woods, too. Like, it's, like, 
it was nice and dark. Got my no. surround sound. Got my eighty inch right no there, chance. and it's just like I want to feel scared right now. Okay, totally, totally disagree. I'm like the type of person who watches Ted Lasso at night and cannot watch anything yeah. scary because I have to go to bed. Last question: PDA in public. Thoughts? Um, well, I mean, I was. I had the most PDA in public. I'd have True. to sit on the couch like this, making out with my fiance in front of <laughs> millions and millions of people. I mean, whatever. At this point, I don't really care. Like, yeah. I'm not going to be like all over my girl, like, you know, but I'm not going to be a- not, like groping her, but you know, a little bit of like touching yeah, maybe in public. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Some yeah. normal, something like, yeah. would you do the bachelor or bachelorette again? No. Why? <laughs> That's going to be a hard pass. <laughs> um, I went through it. It was an awesome experience. I'm super, super grateful for it. Met some good friends. Uh, I've actually got my buddy Ben. His wedding's on Saturday. Like so. Oh my god! And I yeah, love his fiance. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's supposed to be public information. Yeah, but... they're talking. They talked about. It. They went okay. live. Okay. Oh, I, I follow cool. both of them. I yeah. love them. Yeah. Oh. So like, that's cool. Uh, I, I have so many opportunities from the show. Um, but going through that experience again, I, I would say no. Okay. Plus, I'm 35 years old. Like, I'm an old man now. I don't, <laughs> don't want to go back on like. I feel like back in the day, if I saw like somebody who was in their 30s on that show, I'd be like, oh, okay. Like, come on, buddy. <laughs> Girl, like, let's, let's, would you do another reality show though? Uh, it depends what it is. Like, I could see myself doing like a competition show. Cool. Like anything like competitive. I'm super competitive. Uh, I still want to think that I'm an athlete, still kind of prove myself that I can do crazy things. Or anything also like promoting your gym would be so cool, like mm -hmm. that type of thing. I feel like you could, yeah. and when you can control it more as well, Yeah. Um, I feel like that'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah, exactly. A little more control would probably be nice. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much yeah. for coming on Austin yeah. AF. Thanks for having Where me. Where can everyone find you and Booth Camp? You can find Booth Camp a half a mile from this building right <laughs> here, downtown Nashville, Tennessee. And you can find me on all the social medias, except for TikTok. I don't what really the heck? Do we TikTok. gotta get you on TikTok. I think I have a TikTok account, but uh, I think I've posted maybe one video. Oh man, we gotta get Walter TikTok's on the TikTok. Thing. Yeah, Walter Walter's and you way would more do very cool than well me. on TikTok. Yeah. yeah, I can see also on your Instagram. I feel like you, your Walter photos do really well. They do. I feel like I basically focus magnet. like Walter, gym, a little bit of lifestyle. Well, everyone, go follow but him. Not too much Shaw, lifestyle. Is it just at Shaw Booth? Uh, Sean underscore Booth 18. Amazing. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Appreciate and it. I will see you guys next week. <laughs>